Right, well, from the last video, I did see to you that I give a little taster, which was the box. Uh, unfortunately, I got slightly carried away and started it without recording anything. So, quick update. PWM, power supply, and I've got several switches, as you can see, which are going to be master, magnet, and direction. Um, I printed some panels. Unfortunately, that one was an error or a failure because, somehow... I printed it ever so slightly too long, but it's just one for the bin. Printed top plate with the obligatory swarf tray. I thought to myself, I'll print that on there because it'd be handy to put things in, thinking about it afterwards. It's going to fill up the swarf. And the side plate with ventilation to aid with the cooling with the um, VWM. The other thing I printed was that. It's a cable tunnel, which I'll show you now. So the front panel and the top control panel are actually in place. Uh, at the bottom here I put a fuse holder, obviously switch positions, digital display position, um, direction switch and that's going to be the pot. I've printed the back plate and mounted an aluminium base and back to aid with cooling again for the PWM. The tunnel I was showing you actually fits there and the idea of that is that when the shaft is turning obviously it will turn the wires will be able to run over the top or around and nothing's going to rub on the shaft that's the general idea of it and I think it's uh, it's probably the best method I wouldn't lie I have cocked up on several occasions on this uh, one of the things I did do I never made the 3d print solid which has caused me a problem tapping and uh, drilling into them uh, the other thing as well was the fact that I put a nice little pinky hole there for the gland for the power cable. But unfortunately, uh, that's where the PWM is. One of these occasions, I think, where I should have done a drawing, and I never actually did. On the busy end, not an awful lot has changed, obviously. I have temporarily terminated the cables to a chock block. I know this is a botch. My initial plan was to put the cable, a four core cable, under the bed next to the lead screw. Unfortunately, I haven't got the room, and the only way of doing it is to take the bed off. So, as a temporary measure only, I've run the cable across the front. Like I said, this is temporary. I don't use the T slot at the front generally anyway, so it's not going to hurt for the time being. It's only 12 volts, it is fused, so at this moment in time, I'm not all that concerned. But as soon as I need to take the table off, which will probably be soon knowing me, I'll run the cable through the back and it'll be invisible. And of course, over the chop block, I will print a little 3D box to cover all the terminals, the cables and keep everything connected. And I'll probably do a drawing for that bit so I don't uh, mess up like with the other stuff. So this is the front panel complete. As I said, um, speed control, direction control, master power and magnet. If you look inside, it is quite compact. And now you can see the benefit of the actual cable tunnel here. It's not complicated really, it looks complicated. I have got a bit of an issue where I wanted to switch off the motor and switch off the magnet at the same time. I'm going to have to have a little word I think with Ben from Ben's workshop, the Man of Sparks. Because these three very small cables here actually energise two relays inside of here. And I need to tap off those onto either one separate relay and two diodes so I don't get back feed. Or two separate relays. So that when I flick the direction switch off, the magnet switches off. Again, it's one of these things never thought of until I started wiring and realising what was going on there. So that's it. So I think it's time for final assembly. Get the panels on and give it a little test run. Well, it's assembled, as you can see. So that's the control end of it. And that's the busy end of it. So if we come across, the mill is actually powered up. So we can get some sort of idea of what's going on. And if we bring the power on, your display set at 50%. Direction control, speed control. So if I flick direction control on, 
obviously we pan across to that side you can see that we've got belt drive but I haven't switched the magnet in so we come across here and then flick the magnet in we have drive and if we go up to the display you can see she's driving fine again switch it off magnet is still engaged this is something I need to sort out and then back the opposite way obviously the uh, motor is not sounding the best I don't know if you can hear that but we have got speed control if I take it up to a 100 and that's on a one to one drive so it's quite fast taking it back down to that's about 50% there and I think she go relatively slow but I think I need a new motor to be perfectly honest so take it back up to 50 stop it take it back the opposite way and like I said the advantage with this I could probably set it up as an emergency that's the drive disconnected from there am I completely happy with it um, sort of I'm not really fully convinced that what I've done on this end is right I might have to look into it it's not finished anyway I still got lots to do I still want to sort the wiring out I still need to see if I can sort some better way of getting the fixings in because like I said I didn't do solid print but at least it shows it works in all directions you can switch it off magnet off means off so there we have it there will be another installment sometime in the near future just wait and see what comes up